Hello everybody, my name's David and we're now into the final week before High Rocks. Next weekend I'm going to be competing in High Rocks again at London XL and in the classic 80s way it's the final countdown. The heat times came out Saturday, well they haven't officially been released yet but if you go to the High Rocks timing page, uh, search for yourself, you can then see your athlete number. The first four digits of that number correspond to your start time of your heat. You can also see on the High Rocks website, on the same page again, how many people are going to be in your age category. You just go to that advanced search part of the website, enter in London 2020, uh, whatever category you're going to be in, open, pro, whatever, choose your gender, your age category, and it's actually caught out a few people because it looks like the age categories now are based on how old you're going to be when the World Championships is on in May and not how old you're going to be next week. So you have to bear that in mind when you search for yourself on the age categories. I've gone up one age category since April, so I'm now in the 55 to 59 category. And I did the check and I can see there's 42 people as mad as myself still doing fitness, knocking on the door of 60. Uh, that's impressive in itself and a testament that people are now living older and better. There are only 26 people in the same category if you go back to April, so word is out there for people to get into High Rocks for those of us who were brought up watching this sort of thing in our bedrooms in our youth. Finally, another High Rocks timing page hack for you is you can also put in your heat time and get to see who's also going to be in your heat and their age groups. So I'm on at 12.20, so the first four digits of my Horrox athlete number are 12.20, and then the last two digits are actually my actual number in the heat. So I'm 12.20.44, which means I'm the 44th person in the 12.20 heat. So by going to the same advanced search page again, entering in 12.20.01, you can then see the first person in your heat and also their age group. Every time you increment the number at the end, the 0, 1, 0, 2, etc., it gives you the name and age of every person in the heat. When you finally increment that number by one more number and you get no more results, then that's the extent of the people in your heat. So out of my heat, there's actually only four people who are actually in my age category and a total mix of other age groups throughout from 16 to 24 upwards. So some whippersnappers to me in my heat. I assume the way that High Rocks works out which members are going to be in which heat is basically on your submitted estimated finish time. Now with just a week left to go, it really becomes a mental game. The training's done and dusted. For me, I question myself constantly. I'm having to push away any self-doubt as I'm doing this. Can I avoid any of the various illnesses that are floating around? Especially at this time of year with coughs, colds and the inevitable COVID. Finally, I have to ensure I don't get injured before next week. And that's quite a biggie as well. Um, if you're a member of the Facebook High Rocks community group or the High Rocks UK community group, there's loads of posts floating on there with people being injured and having to pull out. Um, I really do sympathise with those people. I can't imagine the frustration levels of having to train for months and months and months, get yourself into a great position to do well at the event and then have to pull out through sometimes it's something that's no fault of your own. This last week, you do really get into your own head uh, a lot. I've spoken to quite a few other people who are doing the event and they've said the same. All you can do is try and concentrate on the end game. Whatever has happened is done and dusted. You've got no control over that. You've either trained enough or you didn't. And, it, and it's too late now to compensate for that. All you can do is try and avoid anything that's in your control, like avoiding illnesses with some sensible precautions. No big groups messing around with, no late night partying this week or alcohol, because those will drop your immune levels and put you more at risk of getting an illness. It's also a time now for recovery, rehab and tapering off the training. So gentle, active recovery type workouts, maybe some slow, easy runs, just movement patterns, that's all. I've been out last week, done a few easy runs, longer, longer runs, but just easy plodding sessions. I had a big session in the middle of the week, a big workout, and then I did another big workout on Sunday as well, uh, which was a, a local cardio class, a circuit training type class, and, and they had a, a thousand rep challenge workout, as you can see here. So that was quite good. It was a it was a more endurance type event, 45 to 50 minutes length, um, and also got my hands on a sled for the final time. Um, a sort of sled pull and a sled push, and my daughter also managed to get on the sled as well. So, so I asked myself, have I trained enough for this high box? And unfortunately, with real world commitments, job, family, etc., it can sometimes be hard to get the workouts in. 
with the high rocks this time being in the winter season especially the weather outside can be difficult to train in it can be really dark early nights throwing it down in rain so i've done quite a few long runs but we'll just see on the day training at the gym itself can also be difficult sometimes as some of the workouts might want you to do skiing rowing pushing a sled wall balls burpees they all need space they all need pieces of equipment um, that would be fine if you're in a really quiet or dedicated gym to yourself um, but if you're in a busy crossfit gym like i work out at sometimes there just isn't the space available or there's just not enough kit available because obviously a class might be on and they might be using some of the pieces of equipment you want to use or the astroturf might be used by somebody else so you have to work around and, and adjust the workouts as necessary. Everyone will have their own objectives and aims for High Rocks. Um, you might just be going into it just to manage to complete it. And if that's you, that's an achievement in itself. Around half the population are now sat at home, feet up, watching TV. So you're fitter than all of those. Some of you might be fitter and will have times in mind to beat or previous times. I myself tend to have multiple small aims and they all lead up to the main target. I think if you just have one single aim in mind, you might find yourself disappointed on the day. However, if you have multiple smaller aims, they all work out together, they all accumulate towards the greater goal. Mm -hmm. That's a win, mm. win, win, win. So what are my aims? Well, the first one is obviously to beat my old time of one over 35. Uh, this should be an easy win as I incurred a penalty last time down to my own personal stupidity see this video. My next wins are to improve times on certain parts of the workout. So obviously you chip timed on everything. So I know where I was slower last time. Um, I was slow on the burpees, the farmers carry and the lunges. So I want to try and beat those times. And I also want to try and get out and get my running pace more consistent and closer to a five minute kilometer. My next target is a sub one hour 25 and my absolute top target will be sub one hour 20. The latter might not be achievable, but I always think it's important to have a goal that seems right out of reach. Otherwise, what are we striving for? Last few days before the event this week, I'm going to be going into carb load mode. So I'm going to be eating more carbohydrate laden foods, uh, such as bread, potatoes, rice, pasta, those sort of things. Um, that increases the amount of fuel in your muscles. Uh, if you go online and do a bit of research, that's been shown to improve your performance by up to 3%. Doesn't sound a lot, but it's free performance gains and over a 90 minute workout, it's basically free time. Also gotta be up in my hydration, day before and on the day of the event. Uh, last time I took a water bottle with me with a little hydroelectrolyte tablet dissolved in it all ready to go. Uh, I drank that about half an hour before I went to the warm up side of life and then ate a banana. I'm also gonna be wearing a hydration pack for this event. Uh, just a small amount of water in it, allowing me to hydrate whenever I want during the race, uh, not when I'm just going past the hydration station. Um, it's only going to have a little bit of weight in it, so it's not going to slow me down, but it's just the mental part of being able to take a drink whenever you want and not have to slow down or take drinks at the hydration stations. That's all there is from me this week. So I hope anyone else who's going to High Rocks at the weekend achieves their aims and goals. And if you're there, I'll see you there.